Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is Leanne Lavender, and today we're going to be working with polymer clay. So, one of my favorite things to do with polymer clay is to make some jewelry. Um, I'm really drawn to the boho um, chunky jewelry, or I don't know what you want to call it. Anyway, I've got these molds, and I've already cooked some. Um, but I'm going to show you the process up to this as well. But I've already cooked some, so um, once you mix it and cook it, and then you can pull it out of these molds, and then we're going to paint it. So let me get all these out so we can start this process from the beginning. And... Alright, I'm going to push these aside because when we get ready to paint them, I will be able to just pull those over and paint them while this new batch is cooking. So, when I am working with polymer clay, I keep all my scraps, um, especially if I know that I'm going to paint some jewelry because um, what the back of it, you just want some you just want a surface and so we're going to actually paint this and so it really doesn't um, matter too much what the color is so I'm going to just take all of this and we're going to um, mix it together and get it ready to go into these molds to cook um, for to work with polymer clay you really need a couple of tools, not too many, but I do recommend a blade um, to cut your clay. Um, and these are relatively inexpensive. They generally come in sets of three or four. This is one I use the most. Um, and then it does come with the squiggly line ones and I don't have it over here um, so there's two of these but then there's another one of these that is more flexible and so I still have it over at where I keep a lot of my polymer clay so I've got two different these are in um, and also so really, and then um, an X-Acto knife is helpful. Um, and as we go along, I will show you some of the other tools. But for this, this is really all we're going to need. So these are at two different. So this has already been kind of mixed up. But you have to condition your clay. Um, right now, it is not very, it's hard to squeeze or whatever. And so, what I do is I will chop it. Because um, really what you want to do is you want to warm it up. You want it to, you know, because what polymer clay is, it's a plastic. And so you just kind of want to get it moving. And so you can and then roll it. Um, just, you know. So take your roller and just move it. Get it to loosen up. And fold it in half. Use your roller. Fold it in half. You really want to work it a little bit before you start running it through the pasta machine because that will save your pasta machine as well. Right now, you can see all the different colors and stuff. 
I mean there's some purples and so when we mix it all together it's going to turn into like a yucky brown or whatever but it works for what I'm going to do with it and it is cracking still on the ends and so but it's starting to be conditioned and so all right so let's get this one to go into because I want to merge these two I mean there's lots of different colors that were mixed in here and these are just like don't ever if you start working with polymer clay don't ever throw any of your polymer clay away because there are so many things that you can do with the scraps and so now I'm going to put these back together when you cut it and you put it back together and you cut it and smush it it starts waking it up because when it sits for a long time it gets into a dormant state and you just got to massage it and wake it up It is a little bit of a workout. Turn it this way. And let's fold it in half. Alright, so I'm going to continue doing this until I get it all conditioned and we'll be back. Okay, so it's pretty conditioned. Um, I'm going to take these ends and I'm going to put them into the middle. And so I'm going to do this one more time. We're going to roll it out very thin. And so this is the color it's probably going to end up being. I mean, it's kind of like a gray-green. Um, and I'm going to roll it out pretty thin because I want to run it through my pasta machine. And if you look, that's an air bubble. So you just take your blade and you just slice into it and it's gone. All right, so as you can see, this side is still, it's kind of muddy. So we're gonna start running it. And your pasta machine has settings on it, one through nine, one being the thickest. And so I'm gonna start with one and I'm gonna run it through and it stretched it out I mean we'll so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it in half and when I run it through I'm gonna put this at the bottom of the pasta machine all right so it's starting to really mix together because the color is looking uniform so I'm gonna fold it again and I'm going to put this end up, run it through. All right. All right, let's, because when we run it through this way, it pushes all the air bubbles up, um, pushes all the air out the opening. If we were to run it this way, it pushes the air and it's going to be trapped. So, all 
All right, it looks pretty blended. So I'm gonna move my pasta machine down to a three. I'm not going to fold it. All right, as you can see, it is much longer and is it is thin. It's thinner, it's not thin, thin. All right, so we're gonna move it down to a five and I'm not gonna fold it again all right and it is stretched all the way across my mat here all right so my clay should be good and conditioned now. If we bend it, it doesn't crack. So we're ready to start filling these molds. So I'm just gonna cut off about this much. And it is pretty thin. And we're gonna put it into a ball. And you want to squish the ball squish I don't know if that's really the word you really want to work this ball because you don't want any air bubbles into the center of it and so I am working it and then I'm going to set it on my glass and I'm gonna swirl it around and I'm gonna push down on it because I want to make sure that I'm not getting any air bubbles and then I'm going to roll it into a log. And I want the log. So the log is as long as that. And I'm going to start just pressing down on and pressing the clay into the mold. Now this cross is the most complicated because it's got extra little areas over here so I'm gonna cut off some extra little bit and I'm gonna put over here all right and we're gonna push everything down really good because we want it all the way in there and we want to make sure that it's got a good impression and don't really worry about fingerprints at this moment because we're gonna fix that all right and I don't know if you can tell but there's kind of a lip so you kind of want to take your clay and just pull it away from the edges a little bit and that's to make sure let's see if we can see it on here I don't know if you can see it but if you don't pull it away then it's gonna hang over and you're gonna see it and you can see it a little bit on this side it's hard to see on the camera let's see if we can get it up here but anyway you want to pull it away from the edge so it makes for a cleaner impression okay and then we're going to take a wet one we're going to lay over it and I'm going to press it down. That way it gets rid of my fingerprints. One more thing I forgot to do. So what I do is I take my, my blade and I just go across the back trying not to cut the mold and I take off any of the extra and there's not a lot of extra and I'm gonna have to put my initials back on it I will 
before I cook it. Same thing. We're just going to get it into a solid ball and then we're going to roll it into a log the same length of that and set it in there and then push it down into the mold. Pull it away from the sides a little bit and then we're going to cut off the excess. Now this one we're not going to put into a log, we're just going to leave it in a solid ball. So if you've played with Play-Doh, it's the same thing. You just want to roll it into a ball. And then we're going to put it right here in the center and just smush it down. Get it in there. Make sure it's all the way because you want to get all of this in there and you don't want to have any air bubbles. So you want to push on it and then you're going to take your blade and just trim off the excess in the back. And then pull it away from the sides. So I'm going to do the rest of these and I'll be back. Okay, so I have them all um, in the molds. And I bought these molds off of Etsy from a lady. Um, she's out of Arizona, I believe. And I will leave her link to her Etsy store in the description of this video because she did an awesome job and she has got so many molds um, to choose from and they're reasonably priced and she gets them to you very quick. Mm -hmm. So I will leave that to you. So I'm going to put these in the toaster oven at the um, recommended um, cooking time and temperature of the manufacturer of the clay and um, and then we will get these painted these others painted so let me get that done and we'll get started okay we're going to paint these guys. We're going to start with a white canvas. I'm trying to think. Should I start with a white or a black? I think I'm going to start with a black. Let me get the black. I'm going to do a white, but I think the black will be better. So let's start with that. this is just acrylic Americana paint. Um, I'm just gonna paint the entire surface and it's hard to see. I'm gonna scoot it over to this white part. So you guys can see.
Okay, let's do the ring. I'll be back. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. Okay. Let's see if this is dry enough now. Yeah. 
get a darker turquoise. May have to do a combination of both. to kind of look like turquoise jewelry. That's why I went with the black paint. doesn't have that same effect. I think I like it on the black better. We go back and paint these black. Just going down these little sides and then I'm going to try to wipe it off. That looks kind of cool. Um, I have some alcohol spray somewhere. Where's my alcohol? Let's spray this a little bit with alcohol. I'm going to take these Q-tips and just kind of Like 
said I wanted to look kind of like turquoise jewelry. Okay. I have to let that one dry. Let's try let's clean this paint off of this brush. Let's grab a little bit of black and just go down in this Try that again. Not as much black. Now we need a little bit more. I'm going to go down in these little, in between these little pearls shapes. That looks really good. It's hard to see on the camera. Put it right there. Put it down here. That's really hard to see on the camera, but it looks pretty good. them with alcohol. Let's see. Yeah, that cross is going to have to just be started over. Ooh, these kind of look Cool. All right. I'm really liking this. These I'm gonna let dry. All right. I'm gonna let it all dry and I'll come back. Okay. I'm back. I'm gonna try a Posca marker. Let me close up some of this paint. There we go. Turn a Posca marker on this cross.
I'm just putting these colors on it and then rubbing it with my fingers and let's see what happens. Ooh, really liking that. Oh, that looks really good. Okay, let's try. I want to get some black down in here. Not too much. let that one dry. Let's do this. Just rubbing it right along here. Before it dries, just rub it in. That really needs to be sanded on the side. Okay, let's get a little bit more. Put it right here. Oh yeah. Those look really good. This actually needs a little bit of black on it. Let's just put a touch. Okay. Just Let's try.
need to do it that way. Alright. And then I'm going to go down the side of each one of these. I like those, so I'm going to leave those alone. Now, do I want to try gold? So just take it, kind of rub it around, and then I'm going to just touch the tops of each one of these little pearls with the gold. ring go with this yeah all right so we're just going to go right here I'm just to have to get some more there and then we're gonna touch the tops and then this would be a set set this guy aside. I'm not happy with it. So these look shoot. It's just a little bit too much. Okay. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to seal them. But I'm going to get my Dremel and clean up the sides a little bit. One second. Okay, I've got them um, sanded down, just wiping them a little bit with some, with a baby wipe just to make sure there's no dust on them. Okay, I'm going to use this clear top coat that I use for all my stuff just need a little bit just a little bit cross just did not turn out right. I'm going to play with it off camera. But we've got two pairs of earrings. Oh, you know what I'm missing? Let me see if it's in here. It is. Okay. 
All right. I think I have everything. So we have two pairs of earrings and we have a ring. So I've got a little device here and it drills a hole for us to put our findings in. And I just bought a new one as well. All right, we got some E6000. I have my ring. Um, I found this, it was on discount at Hobby Lobby, 74 cents. Um, and it has three rings in it. I'd already had one open, so I don't need to open that again. And then I think these I'm going to do with silver. Um, bindings, as they're called. Let's see, is this going to open? It's taped. There. Yeah, I think I'm going to do silver. And for these, I'm going to do gold. Should I do gold or should I match this? Let's see how it looks. I haven't worked with jewelry in such a long time. Okay, I think I'm going to do this so that I match that. Let's see. We need the earring pieces. I'm kind of embarrassed to show you this. These things are hard to untangle, so it was just like, okay, you can just stay like that. So here is the silver. And I thought I had I have to do gold. Oh, I can stand in here. This. I put out some of these. Okay. Trying to find all the pieces. Need something. Mm. Okay. Move that over here. So we need something coming out. Creative, I think. Okay. I see. I don't think we're going to start with that one because that's going to be a difficult one. This one we need. Where was this little pieces? Oh, they're right here. Alright, so these are the little hooks that will go down into the jewelry to create the little eye and then we will attach everything onto it. So first thing we've got to do is create the hole. So we're going to <coughs> sorry. We're going to decide what's the top 
and it really doesn't matter. Um, this one's a little thick right there. It's a little thick right there, so I think I'm going to make this the top. So we're just going to start and your Dremel will do this too, but for some reason my Dremel is um, taken apart. I think my husband had to use a piece of it. Okay, so we're just going to keep twisting this down in here because we need it deep enough that one of these little things will go in. And so let's test it and see if this is going to go in. And it's just like a little mini eyelet. You just kind of screw it in. Alright. There's one. And I'm going to go right here. That's deep enough, so I'm just gonna take it out. And I'm gonna put this guy in. I mean, these are teeny tiny. Screw it in. This is a pretty tight fitting. Um, if it was um, not, this is actually screwing in. Um, if it was really loose, I would just take some E6000 and dab on the end of it before you put it in but that is a pretty tight hold so we're done with these little pieces and so we are going to turn them into earrings so here's this earring here's this earring and you could connect these two but I like them to dangle just a little bit, so I'm going to put a jump ring right in the middle of them. And so you've got this little guy. And that's what this, it doesn't fit very well, but you just put it on your thumb like this. And the opening is up here at the top so I'm gonna put my pliers on the side and I'm gonna stick the other side into the slats of the ring and I'm just going to turn it that way it doesn't twist it so you've got your and this is always so you're going to put it in your ear this way so so you've got you've put the jump ring through the earring part and then you're going to put your earring on it so that you only have to open it and close it once and then you're going to close it and there they are You can use your hands to do this too. You don't have to have this little ring thing. It just came with one of my jewelries that I got. So you're going to put that on there. And so see you can just use your fingers too. And you're going to close it. When you close it you want it to meet and just a smidge past. 
and so look at that all right so those are done so let's do the ring the rings gonna be super easy so we're just going to take and I can take this off now we're going to take this glue and you're just going to I haven't used this in a while let's hope that it hasn't dried up all right it's coming out and you're going to put some on this side and some on this side in the middle because you want the glue on both sides because um, then it it does better um, oh poo. okay so then you're just going to put it right in the center and we're going to leave that upside down and let it dry okay this one is going to be a little difficult well not really because instead of screwing them in we're just going to cut these off really short and um, glue those in here okay so on this pattern the top has one sticking straight up and so that's how you know it's the top and so we're going to drill our hole right into the tippy top. Okay. I wish there was a way to mark it so I'll know how deep I am. All right. Because I'm going to have to cut this. I think I might go a little bit deeper. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my black marker because I know how deep I want to go. So I'll name. I want to go to right there. Okay. And you still want to be careful because this polymer clay can still break. Okay, I'm going to keep going. And this guy on the end is still unscrewing. Stop unscrewing. Okay. Almost to the top of the black mark. All right. This way also I will have them the same depth. Alright. So I want to cut it right here. These are pliers and also cutters. Both. So I want to cut it right here. We're just going to take it. And you just want to make sure you point it down because these things will fly. Alright. I grabbed the wrong one. This is a pinhead instead of a loop. So let's find here's a loop. Alright. Okay. We've got a hole in that one. Now we're going to do a hole in this one. And you want to make sure you start it in a good spot that you're going to have room to go all the way down. It's not going to be too close to the side. 
and sometimes you have to pull it back out screw this and I'm just going to test this out and make sure so I'm going to stick it in here and I could probably go a little bit further yeah that one that is nice yeah I'm going to go a little bit further Okay. We're going to cut this one the same length as the other one. I just put my hands over it so if it starts flying. Okay. There. Okay. We're going to take this E6000. I'm going to get a pet piece of trash paper and squeeze some out. Don't need a lot. those two pins. Let's try this. Sometimes it's really good to stick something thick in it. There. And then put the cap over it. There. Alright, we're going to take these pins. We're going to run it through this glue pretty good. And we're going to stick it in, pull it out, and then stick it back in. If you stick it in, pull it out, and stick it back in, then it leaves some on the inside. Okay. Same thing. Gonna pick up some glue. You don't want to get the. You don't want to have a chunk of it. Okay, so we're gonna stick it in. Pull it out. That actually stayed all the way in there, so that's good. I got some more. I'm gonna stick it in. All right, and then we're gonna throw this little piece of paper away. All right, so that will harden up. It's um, not as hard as it needs to be for you to wear it, but we can finish putting these together. 
So same thing. We are going to open up the jump ring. Well, I'm going to use a different type of hook. So I'm going to use a French hook. And I always have to look at it and go, okay, this is what. So this is this goes into your earring. Let's see. Yeah. So you want your jewelry to be in this little hoop section. So you will, you want it to be, I don't know if you can see this. So there's a little, it's a French hook. So see it on here? It goes down and up and down it has a silver ball. So you want your jewelry piece to actually hang and this is the top and this is the bottom. So you want your jewelry piece to hang right in here on this bottom hook. So you could just have it just like this without the jump ring. But like I said, I like for mine to dangle just a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got my, there's my, and we don't have to put this on yet. So then we're going to close this up. And you're going to go right past it. And there we have a hoop. I'm going to go ahead and do this one too. So you're going to open this up, put this hook on it, and you're going to go past it a little bit, and you want to make sure that you just, you, when you open them, that you don't pull it out. You just want it back and forth, because you don't want it to lose its shape. Okay, so we have... We have the pin in, which is being is glued, and so we have to let that dry. And this is not there. Okay. And then we put the jump ring on it. And now we need to put these guys on it. So all we have to do is put the jump ring right in here where the ball is, and then we're going to pinch these closed pinch this closed and then that set of earrings is done and so same thing with this I love these French hooks so you're gonna put it right there with the ball and you're just gonna pinch it closed so we have these earrings that we've just done we have these earrings and we have a lovely little ring. And so, and we started off with this ugly scrap clay. Oh, and um, my other ones that I put in the mold yesterday or earlier is finished cooking. Let me go get those and pop them out and show you. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And they just finished cooking about 10 minutes ago when I started um, putting this jewelry together. So they're still warm, but they're, you can touch them. So this is the ring and you just, the clay is gonna be hotter then. So there's that. There's that one. There's that one. Here's the cross. It didn't turn out. Oh, we got. All right. There's that one. And there's that one. Okay. So they are still a little bit flexible because they're warm. And until um, they cool off, the cooler 
once they start cooling off they will become harder like these um, at this point is a good paint and turn into jewelry so I will put these on some um, jewelry displays for the final picture at the end of the video um, I hope you enjoyed this and I don't know how many times I've said um and so and all of those words that you're not supposed to say when you're making a video but I hope you enjoyed this video I love working with polymer clay because you can create such beautiful little pieces out of ugly brown clay um, the possibilities are endless um, if you enjoyed this video please subscribe give it a thumbs up and we will be back tomorrow with something new thank you have a great day